Hi everyone, welcome to this video. Uh, here we'll be using uh, Node Red on a Raspberry Pi to connect through RS485 Modbus to the ME131 energy meter and read values. Okay, so for testing purposes, I just powered up the ME131 energy meter and connected voltage to line 1 and then connected uh, RS485 uh, to the RS485 port and then to a USB to RS485 converter and then to my Raspberry Pi uh, that's uh, powered up and connected to my local network. Okay, for those of you not familiar with Node Red, it's basically a flow based low code development tool for visual programming developed originally by IBM uh, for wiring hardware devices together, APIs, and online services as part of the Internet of Things. It's a browser-based uh, flow editor, which can be used to create JavaScript functions uh, and uh, the elements, applications and flows can be saved for later use. So it's a really uh, easy to use, uh, useful uh, application. Uh, there's lots of videos and information on the internet and YouTube. If, you can, if you're can, if interested just uh, to learn more about it, just uh, search for Node Red. Okay, to get started, you can just go to node.org forward slash docs forward slash getting started. I'll share the links in the description below. Um, and then you can install it either locally on your computer, on a Raspberry Pi, in a Docker container, uh, or compile it from source code or BeagleBone, uh, which is very similar to Raspberry Pi or even now on an Android device. Okay, so uh, you can just download it and install it and then continue uh, with the video from there on. Okay, I'm accessing a node read on my Raspberry Pi on my local network uh, on this URL and then double point uh, 1880, so port 1880. And then you can just log in with the username and password that you set uh, during installation. Great, and then uh, let's start off with a new flow. Okay, so the first step is to install your Modbus components if it's not already installed. Uh, you can do that by just clicking on these uh, three, uh, four lines up there, and then go to Manage Palette, and then Palette, and then you just search for Modbus, and then the, the um, one that we want to install is this mod node red contrib modbus and I've already installed it, but you will just click there install and then it will be installed. Okay, so once you've installed the, not, uh, the modbus nodes, uh, it will come up here on the left hand side, uh, different uh, nodes that you can use for various functions. The ones, one we want to use is um, Modbus read, so just drag and drop that onto your palette. And then let's configure that. So to configure, just double click on it and then firstly set your server. So I already added, you just click there to add a new one. I already added um, a server, but let's just go into the settings and see what I've added there. Uh, so you can select TCP IP if it's a uh, Modbus over TCP IP or Serial or Serial Expert and that Expert just adds a few more settings. And then if you click on that search button, it should automatically bring up um, your uh, Serial port. Okay, so once we've selected our Serial port, uh, you must select the Serial type. Either RTU buffered or RTU will work, uh, not ASCII. Uh, and then the default uh, parameters again to connect through the Modbus. Uh, this is normally in the manual. Uh, so your board rate, data bits, stop bits, and parity. And then you can just click update. Um, and then the next step is to specify the um, function code. Firstly, we want to read uh, holding registers. So very similar to um, open mod scan. And the address we want to read is 70. This time there's no offset. So you enter the address that you want to read, not 71. Uh, and we want to read two registers. And let's read it every minute. Okay, and then say done. And uh, click there to read. 
uh, first we need to deploy it. It takes a second or two. Okay, so once you've deployed it uh, successfully, you can just click on that uh, button to read and it read successfully. And you can, to find out more about this node, just click on this handbook and the more information about the node comes up here. So it's got two outputs. The one outputs a data array and the other one a response buffer. So we want to connect to the input one or output one and connect a debug node there to see what's actually being put out. So just connect the two together and uh, go to the debug window and let's just clear all of this um, and uh, click on the read button again. Okay, and for some reason nothing happens because you haven't deployed it yet. So just click on deploy and click on the read button again and you'll see the two registers and the two values that we're getting there. Okay, so the values we got in the two registers is uh, far away from the value that we're expecting, which is uh, the serial number of the device, uh, which was this. Uh, also, when we specified the register year 70, that corresponds to the serial number of the device. So we're just using that for testing purposes. Um, so we need to convert this these numbers to the numbers we're expecting to do that. Um, add this node onto your worksheet and it's a buffer parser. So also from the first node connected the output to the input and then let's configure this buffer parser. Okay, to configure the buffer parser, first select the data type that we're expecting. So we expecting an unsigned 32-bit integer and little Indian, so uh, soft bits. Um, and if we click done and we just clear all the debug info and then add another debug node and then wire it up and deploy. Let's see what we're getting there. Okay, so we're getting a value back, but it's still not ex what we expected. Um, that's because we still need to swap the bytes and you can just say uh, swap uh, 32, done and deploy. And now if we test it again, you'll see we're getting the value back that we were expecting. Uh, 2424832002. Okay, great. So we're getting the right values back. And um, yeah, that's how to read values and swap the values and uh, debug display. Okay, great. So now that we've read the serial number of the device, let's see if we can read the voltage. Uh, if we have a look on the manual on page 35, um, uh, voltage uh, UA is stored in register 1010. A readable register, it's two uh, registers long of a data type float32. Um, so let's see if we can read that. Okay, so again we uh, put in a Modbus read node. And configure it again, use the same server, uh, address is 1010, and we need to read two registers, um, just make it once every minute or so, and the function code must be uh, read holding register. So if we click done, and deploy, and it's we see it's connected, and it's reading successfully. Great, so let's add a debug node to see what has been read. Deploy and read again. And we see there's the value of the two registers that, that's been read. Okay, so again, the same story. We need to swap the two registers as it's a little Indian, Indian format. And we're gonna use the buffer parser for that. 
and connect that up and let's say uh, swap 32 and the data type is uh, float little Indian okay and click done and again just add a debug node deploy and let's see what we get now great and there's a value of 239 volts and if we read it again uh, you can see it changed a little bit from last time uh, great so that's how to read the um, the voltage uh, it's quite a mission converting uh, these numbers one needs to play around and there's a lot of explanations about uh, a little Indian and the big Indian on uh, in Modbus on the internet so you can just do some research and I'll leave a few links about that as well in the description below great that's it for this video hope it's been helpful uh, please like and subscribe to see more and till next time